wasn't so much the invitation. It was more about the inviter. About noon during a road trip, my husband Stu and I pulled up into a town. And after parking the car, we turned around and realized there was an Episcopal church in front of us. Now it was kind of late on that Sunday morning, but we could still see a fair number of people standing or sitting around those red doors. It was late, but that was a beautiful church. Looking from the outside, and the campus was gorgeous, so we walked towards it to see what we could see. And, as you may have expected, we were invited in. Not by the vicar, not by the dean, not by the senior warden, and not even by the man in the brown homespun tunic, the white cincher, who stood there offering bread and wine to people standing on the street. Nope, none of those people. It was the people sitting on the steps and kind of loitering around the red door. They invited us into the church. They were street people. And they welcomed us to come and worship and fellowship with them. Now, in my mind, that's not the way it's supposed to work. You know? Not the way. That kind of blew my mind, and I wonder if that's kind of the way that the people who were listening to Jesus in today's gospel felt. You know, when he preached about that bread, not the kind they were accustomed to, but some kind of crazy bread he called living bread. And there were a few doubters in that crowd, and they asked, who does this guy think he is? He's only Mary and Joseph's kid. And he's telling us that he is living bread. Living bread from God. And he invites us to eternal life. And not only that, this living bread thing is going to transform us. And maybe even change us to how we see and understand and hear God. All we got to do is trust in him. Now you and I today know that that invitation from Jesus was wonderful. Because what Jesus was telling them and reassuring all of us is that the promise of God in and with us, and we in God, means that we are never alone. God is always with us. And it doesn't matter whether our, our horizons are so narrow that they sometimes obliterate God. Because God's love, grace, and mercy and his compassion surround us at all times, even when we can't see. And for us to see that love, grace, mercy, and compassion, well, like Jesus said, we have to choose to trust. Now, sometimes trusting is hard, but then again, sometimes it's easy. Like on that summer morning when the invitation came from the street people, it was pretty easy for me. There, I will tell you, there was no leap of faith because I knew that even if we were invited into the undercroft of a very unusual church, I was not alone. I had my cell phone with me. <laughs> but it was in that undercroft when we walked in where we were surrounded by street people, street pe some people who lived on the street, some people who, who, had, who walked and looked for shelter. These people were accessing the nurses station for over-the-counter medications. They were picking up much-needed shoes socks, jeans, foot ointment, and they were all lining up for a hot meal. 
And it was there, in that undercroft, that the vicar told us, my husband and I, a story about love, faith, and trust. He told us the story of that church. Now this modest mission church is located in the parish hall of the cathedral. And this church, this mission church, was started by a vicar. A vicar who opened the red doors to the people on the streets and invited them to come in. They were welcome to come in and taste and see. But very few entered through that door. And even fewer stayed. So the priest, with many prayers, great faith and trust, pushed that altar on wheels out the red doors, took it to the streets, and people began to come. They came slowly at first, but soon there were enough people for them to then search for a church building in which to worship and gather. And that was their building, a community where they help one another. They actively seek out and stretch their hands out to other people. It is a community where these children of God, whom I so callously and cruelly label as street people, they are so filled with love and compassion for God that they reach out and invite all people, even strangers, like my husband and I. They invite us all to come and taste and see. And this community in the Undercroft is a home where if we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, we will see all surrounding about them and us the abundant and unending grace of God and love. And I felt truly welcome. But was it perfect? Was that a perfect place? Well, the current vicar, the man who was standing in front of us, he told us he was invited as an interim priest about five years ago. And he said, hey, it is not perfect. <coughs> Good, but not perfect. And among the problems they, they struggle for, uh, they, they search for financial help. But there's always pushback. And the pushback is from the people who are in the sanctuary upstairs in the cathedral. Because not all of them welcome the street people into their fellowship hall. Because people like that, they think, come with problems and it makes them uncomfortable. But this church works. I think it is because the Spirit is with them and around them and surrounds them. And about that priest I told you, the guy who came five years ago, well, he's still there. And you know why? Not because no one else would come, but because this man who came out of retirement felt that he is following the call of God, and he trusts that that is where he should be, in that church, welcoming all people. And it is, I think, truly amazing what can happen for any or all of us when we choose to listen to Jesus and then to follow him. I believe our lives can be transformed they can be, our life can be transformed into seeing Jesus in all people as we act as the hands and feet of this Jesus who loves us all. It is amazing, and it most assuredly does happen in any place, anywhere, and any time. And that invitation to trust in God's power to work in and through us? Well, folks, that invitation is still open. And thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.